in order to help restore peace and uh, harmony, I would gladly do so. I've been doing that all my life, and I've moved under uh, present. Even when uh, 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 I was in the country before coming here, and when the constitution was in force, assuming the constitution has been abrogated now, when it was in force, I'm supposed to be uh, a, a constitutional head of state, and I'm referred to as other constitutional heads of state as father of the country. And we have proved that uh, an opposition can exist in Africa and also succeed. I don't agree with some writers in the British press who are beginning to say that uh, uh, Mr. Ian Smith may be wrong after all in uh, uh, transferring uh, power to an African majority. I think that those people generalize. If they have to write uh, within the context of the experience of Nigeria, they will agree with assumption of power effectual. From the information at my disposal, the cabinet decided uh, to transfer power uh, to him as the general officer commanding the armed forces. It means an abdication of power. And, since, uh, uh, and it means then the suspension of the president, the prime minister, the four regional governors, and the four regional premiers. In other words, the civilian authorities have found it impossible to maintain law and order, and have transferred same to the military authorities until law and order uh, can be maintained. Are you or your cabinet setting a time limit on this assumption of power? I'm not in position to say because I wasn't there. But the acting president, in a telephone conversation to me, uh, merely mentioned that cabinet met and unanimously and voluntarily agreed to abdicate power. I'm assuming in the light of previous practice elsewhere in the world that it would be temporary. But this military government could last six months or a year or even two years. It's been, that's been the case in other parts of the world, and I wouldn't rule that out. President, is it likely that General Rance's temporary power could be... Minister uh, Sir Albert Magai, last week in Lagos, he said, or he led me, and those who think like me, to believe that Britain could not have used force because of reasons of logistics. If, therefore, Britain cannot use force, against his own colony, I don't see how Britain could be in position to render military assistance to a friendly government which asks for it. This is purely academic, of course, because the British government can always decide to do what they like. But I, I feel that since African states felt annoyed at the inability of the government to use force in Rhodesia for logistical reasons, it would be very embarrassing to the present government to do so in view of the fact that some African states had already broken relations from Britain on that reason. Can I put it another way, yes. Mr. President, that if you, the Nigerian cabinet, or General Ronsi, invited British military troops mm -hmm. to aid pro this coup or mutiny, yes. would this be acceptable to you? If uh, the cabinet did that, yes. If General Ronsi did that, I'm not in position to say anything because he's in charge, he's in control, and he is in position to decide what to do in the circumstances. It's possible he had insufficient force or sufficient weapons, and like a soldier, he felt that's what he should do. But I've only pointed out the embarrassing situation to Britain in view of this delicate issue on Rhodesia. Some of us feel very strongly about it, and when we had the explanation given, well, we thought it might be the answer, logistics, but it's strange that uh, a, a country uh, uh, as powerful as Britain is not in position to do so to a crown colony, which enjoys internal self-government. This unrest now has been going on for, for many, many months. Can you see it ending in a breakup, a complete breakup of the Federation? Well, it's unfortunate to reply to this question, but uh, you have based it on facts. It is true that we had uh, trouble in the Thief Division for almost a year or more. And since the elections in Western Nigeria uh, last October, We've had a series of uh, violent outbursts and riots so that it could lead to anything. Well, we are a federation, and all federations are usually subjected to stresses of different kinds. We, as a young nation, five years old, have been submitted, uh, subjected to such stresses. 
well, occasionally we refer to this as our teeth in troubles. So it is possible to lead to a breakup of the Federation. But there are some of us who are given a lifetime to preserve the unity of the country. Is it all right? Uh, all right now. Okay, sir. Your Excellency, do you think that this will be the end of the Nigeria as we see it at the moment? You don't need to apply. <laughs> Your Excellency, how soon do you intend to go back in the, to Nigeria? In what way do you think you can help now that General Nwansi has abolished the office of president? Do you think that General Nwansi is acting purely uh, to restore order? The British High Commissioner was at the cabinet meeting yesterday in Lagos. Do you think that this could result in the use of British troops in Nigeria? Thank you. Okay. I just have a couple of notes. 